Thanks for joining us. We begin with our top story, and that is the situation in Ukraine. First, here's a recap of some of the latest developments. Russia has issued an ultimatum. The Black Sea Fleet has told Ukrainian forces in Crimea to surrender by 10 p.m. our time tonight, which is 5 a.m. Tuesday morning in Ukraine. So we're watching that. Also, the EU governments, as we mentioned, have now agreed to consider targeted measures if Moscow fails to de-escalate the situation in Ukraine. And soldiers now controlling Ukrainian border posts as well as all military facilities and a key ferry terminal in Crimea. So you may know Canada has taken some action against Russia already as this crisis started. Canada has recalled its ambassador in Moscow on Saturday. It's now looking at possible sanctions against Russia. And also recently Canada had a Canadian delegation that was led by our foreign affairs Mr. John Baird in Kiev. So let's get to uh, Ottawa. Joining us right there is a member of that delegation that we mentioned, Ted Opitz, joins us. He's a Conservative MP for Etobicoke Centre. Mr. Opitz, in your riding, a large number of Ukrainian Canadians we know, and how are they reacting first to this ultimatum that Russia has offered to uh, get Ukrainian forces to surrender and leave Crimea by 5 a.m. tomorrow or face a military storm? Harsh, stern language. Are you getting phone calls? Uh, I, I haven't yet, uh, Jacqueline, but I, I absolutely will. I've gotten some messages. I can I can see the uh, the feed on on Twitter and Facebook and other places. Um, you know, look, every everybody is uh, absolutely uh, uh, concerned about this. It's a very very troubling development. This is something that is right out of the old Soviet playbook, and uh, and uh, unfortunately is leading to greater destabilization of the situation rather than de-escalation. And uh, I'm uh, very, very concerned about it. Well, and so as this seems to be ratcheting up and escalating, what is Canada able to do? What should we do? Well, Canada's done a lot already. Prime Minister Harper and, uh, and Minister Baird have been leading from the front all along in this. Of course, uh, I was uh, with Minister Baird on a delegation uh, to Kiev, uh, talking to the new uh, provisional, uh, the transitional government, rather that that we recognize, speaking uh, to Prime Minister Yatsenyuk and, of course, uh, Speaker and, and Acting President Tuchinov uh, about the situation. Uh, Canada has demonstrated uh, tremendous support for the people of Ukraine. Uh, we had uh, we had toured the Maidan and uh, and paid our respects to the fallen and to the wounded. Um, and these are are people that have sacrificed in blood. To, to strengthen their democracy, to, to further the principles of, of freedom and to have a government and a nation that is free from corruption so that, that all can, can profit and have a hope and a future right. and opportunity but in that country. As you know, the leaders in uh, Ukraine are saying this is a declaration of war and some of the possible responses from the West, we're talking about sanctions on Russia, freezing assets of the Russians here in this country, uh, maybe expelling Russia from the G8, but would any of that be sufficient? Again, you know, what are your constituents saying to you? Well, look, it's, it's important that uh, all of our international actions are coordinated. Um, the Prime Minister, of course, has, has spoken to Prime Minister Itzenyuk today. Um, you know, reaffirming our, our support uh, for the people of Ukraine. We, we have, as you, you already uh, noted, uh, recalled our ambassador for consultations. Uh, we are talking to all of our international partners. Uh, the Prime Minister has, has talked to many uh, world leaders right now about uh, possible uh, further actions against Ukraine and, of course, uh, working very, very hard to, uh, to find an opportunity to stabilize Ukraine financially uh, down the road. Mm -hmm. And what about what we're hearing from the European Union, um, that they're considering targeted measures? Are you privy to, I mean, what is that? What might that be? Well, uh, the targeted measures is, uh, you know, against uh, individuals uh, as part of uh, Putin's regime. That's a, that's a possibility. Uh, they could look at other economic measures. As you also discussed, uh, all of the G7 have refused to, uh, to carry on with preparations for the, the G8 conference in Sochi, which uh, further isolates Russia. 
um, uh, and and Russia is in total violation right now of international law. They they were uh, a signatory to the 1994. Uh, Budapest declaration that respected right. the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and now they have violated uh, not only their own signature on that document but but have uh, breached uh, international law. Well so Mr. Opitz, if Canada sees that as a violation why not boot out Russia's ambassador to this country? Um, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Is that, that imminent? That, that, uh, no, I can't say that right now. Uh, I know that uh, that Minister Baird has discussed that possibility. It's an option that remains on the table, and uh, as all options do, and they uh, and these things will be coordinated between ourselves and all of our uh, key allies. All right, we continue to watch uh, what is a very fast-changing, fluid situation, also dangerous and frightening, to be frank. Ted Opitz is a Conservative MP. He's been joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for having me on.